In the following list, match the lettered phrases with the numbered structures appearing in the axial CT. Let's try to identify some of the structures and the level of the section. It's an axial CT of the thorax. Uh, this is the anterior aspect where we can see the sternum here. Posteriorly, we can see the vertebral body and the uh, rib attached to the body and the transverse process of a vertebra and the mediastinum. We can see the ascending aorta and the descending aorta. And this is the pulmonary trunk dividing into right pulmonary artery and left pulmonary artery. And here is the superior vena cava on the right side. Also, we can see here uh, behind the pulmonary trunk, we can see the trachea and it is clear that the trachea is starting to bifurcate. So identifying a bifurcation of the trachea, bifurcation of the pulmonary trunk, presence of an ascending and a descending aorta at the same section, all these, they support that the level of the section is at the transthoracic plane or at the level of the lower border of T4 vertebra and at the level of the sternal angle anteriorly. Let's now check the options. First phrase, supplied by posterior primary rami of spinal nerves. So it seems that this phrase is related to a muscle that is located around the thoracic wall. Posterior primary rami of spinal nerves, they supply the true muscles of the back, the erector spiny muscles of the back. And it's either 13 or 14, but it's actually, it is 13. This is the erector spiny muscle because 14 is a more superficial muscle. And this is the trapezius muscle, which is not supplied by posterior primary rami of spinal nerves, but it is supplied by the accessory nerve. In fact, the accessory nerve supplies two muscles, the trapezius and the sternocleidomastoid muscles, which are supplied by the cervical root of the accessory nerve. The other phrase supplies coronary arteries. The artery that supplies the coronary arteries is the ascending aorta. Ascending aorta supplies the right and left coronary arteries, so this matches with two. Passes into the hilum of the left lung. Of the structures that are present here and that might pass into the hilum of the left lung, it should be on the left side, and it is the pulmonary artery. Seven is the left pulmonary artery that passes into the hilum of the left lung. Passes through the diaphragm at the level of T12 vertebra, and the structure that passes through the diaphragm at the level of T12 vertebra is the descending thoracic aorta to become the abdominal aorta. So it will be 11. Supplies bronchial arteries. The bronchial arteries are two on the left, one on the right. They are small arteries. They carry oxygenated blood and supply the bronchial tree with oxygenated blood. They are branches of the descending thoracic aorta and so, again, this matches with 11. Articulates with the lateral end of the clavicle. Lateral end of the clavicle actually articulates with the scapula. And so the bone here, 12, is the scapula that articulates with the lateral end of the clavicle. In fact, it is the acromion of the scapula that articulates with the lateral end of the clavicle at the acromioclavicular joint drains into the right atrium. What it drains into the right atrium could be either the superior vena cava or the inferior vena cava or the coronary sinus. These are the main veins that drain into the right atrium. Of course, there are some small veins, the anterior cardiac veins and the vena cordis minimi that also drain into the right atrium, but the three main structures are the superior inferior vena cava and the coronary sinus. So here, we have the superior vena cava that drains into the right atrium. It opens into the right atrium at the level of the right third costal cartilage. Arises from the right ventricle, the artery that arises from the right ventricle, from the infundibulum of the right ventricle, is the pulmonary trunk. So this matches with four. Lined by pseudostratified columnar ciliated epithelium, Pseudostratified columnar ciliated epithelium is a typical 
respiratory epithelium. So the structure that is shown here that belongs to the respiratory system is the trachea, which is lined by pseudostratified columnar ciliated epithelium. Derived from the right 6 aortic arch, the right 6 aortic arch, its proximal part provides the right pulmonary artery, and so this matches with 5, the right pulmonary artery. Supplied by the long thoracic nerve, the long thoracic nerve is a branch of the brachial plexus that supplies the serratus anterior muscle. Serratus anterior muscle has eight digitations that are attached to the upper eight ribs and is located on the lateral side of the uh, thoracic wall and continues posteriorly to be attached to the anterior aspect of the medial border of the scapula. So it, this matches with nine. This is serratus anterior. Eight is located between the ribs. They are muscle fibers, thin muscle fibers, and these constitute the intercostal muscles. But nine is located outside, is attached to the ribs, not in between the ribs, but attached to the ribs, and this is the serratus anterior muscle. Articulates with the medial end of the clavicle. Medial end of the clavicle articulates with the manubrium of the sternum at the sternoclavicular joint, so this matches with the sternum here. This is the sternum, as I mentioned earlier. There is still possibility that this is the manubrium of the sternum articulating with the body because we can see the ascending, descending aorta at the same level of the section, bifurcation of the trachea and bifurcation of the pulmonary trunk.